Hi, you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Monday. Over here in the Atlantic, still fairly quiet. We are watching a new invest out here in the Central Atlantic, Invest 98L, which is spinning up now within the monsoon trough in here and is starting to look pretty nice. NHC is giving it a high chance for development, and I would expect this to probably try to become a storm within the next few days or so. It's rotating nicely in here. This is mostly mid level rotation that you see. This is actually not a closed sur surface circulation, although that may be a little bit hard to believe from initial appearances. There's a monsoon trough outlined right here and it's fully embedded within this boundary. We have southwesterlies coming into it here. There's still southwesterlies out here and there's more convective mass out this way so there's not quite, we don't have that southerly wrapping component and we don't have that northerly wrapping component on both sides of the circulation. It's just southwest meeting northwest and then southwest meeting northeast. So we still don't quite have that closed circulation, but it is starting to get there and it's starting to rotate pretty nicely and here is a consolidated area of low pressure. So I wouldn't be too surprised to see this develop within the next day or so before it encounters some wind shear as it gets farther west. You can see if we look at the high level cirrus clouds here near Puerto Rico, notice how they're blowing out of the west here. There's kind of an upper level trough outlined in here and this isn't forecasted to move very much over the next week or so and chances are we're going to have the tut trough imp um, imparting shear on the northeastern Caribbean within a week's time when this system gets into this area, which means by the time it gets to the islands, it may encounter the same kind of struggles that Maria did when she was in here, and it may get sheared and not able to strengthen a whole lot. And that's why the global models probably don't deepen it that much. So we may see this develop, but it may not be that strong of a system in here, though of course the islands need to keep an eye on this as this is probably headed for their area. This is the model tracks for it, generally taking a west-northwest here, and I think the Leeward Islands will, will have to deal with this. And it'll probably try to affect Puerto Rico and Hispaniola with at least some rainfall in here as it will probably continue west-northwest. The GFS was trying to curve this out sharply like this. I think that's a little bit early for a recurve. I think it'll get at least this far like these models are showing in here and then perhaps try to curve up into the islands, Cuba and the Bahamas and Hispaniola perhaps in the long range. But we'll have to wait and see on that. This is the European out to day six. This is where 98L would be in here, this little kink in the ice bars just east of Puerto Rico and here you can see where it would probably go west northwest and probably diffuse into this area in here. I wouldn't expect this to be a, a massive developing storm if it got in here. One, because it would be sheared out of the west by some upper level troughing and then we have this out here lowering pressures all along a frontal boundary along the eastern seaboard. Probably not a great region for this to get convergence and develop in here. So I would expect this to probably end up curving out into this trough if there's anything left of it in this region because it looks likely that it would try to get sheared in the face of the upper level troughing in the Atlantic. But if we look at the pattern for the 8 to 10 day period, 500 millibar heights and anomalies for the European on the left, GFS on the right. We can see what's going on. We still have the big trough over the Gulf of Alaska here. This has been a hallmark of the pattern for a while now. We can almost always count on that trough to be there. We have the ridge over the Rockies in here on both models, and then we have troughiness over New England and the eastern seaboard. Now, we, were, we have been talking about this pattern where the trough starts to set up, and what's supposed to happen here is we get the trough, and then on the back side here, we start to get high pressure at the surface building in and coming down to the eastern United States, and if we get high pressure here, we start forcing air down towards the Caribbean and start converging air in here and try to get low pressure going. The problem with this pattern right now is that what we've had on the models is we now have random pieces of this trough trying to hang back farther west and south over the southern states. And if we go back to the European day six, we can see this. The trough's trying to hang back in here. And so what this means is that the trough axis is here. To the east of the trough axis, we're going to have low pressure in the form of a front, a long strung out front over the southeast United States. So you can see that there's an area of low pressure all through here. And then the pressure gradient here is very weak. If we take the pressure at Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, and then at Asheville, North Carolina, we have a difference of 1,000. We have 1,013 at Asheville, and we have a 1,013 about at Guantanamo Bay. So there's a difference of about zero there. And 
typically the normal difference between those two stations is about six millibars in the month of October. So we want to see at least that, if not more. And remember when I showed you all those storms that developed in the Western Caribbean and curved north towards Florida and the Bahamas and the Eastern Gulf, almost every time the formation date when those storms developed had a difference in pressure between Asheville and Guantanamo Bay of at least eight or 10 or 12 millibars. So an above average difference. So what we really need is we need this trough to get far enough east so that the surface high pressure back here over the plains can get down here over the southeast United States, intensify this pressure gradient in here, and force air down into the Caribbean so we can get low pressure in here. And so this is the problem my original target date for development to occur in the Caribbean was the period between the 15th and the 25th. That has had to march forward steadily, and we may now be pushing this right into early October, so my timing has been off on this. However, I think that the logic behind why we should eventually get development down in the Caribbean still stands. And, you know, of course, you might be saying, well, if we wait long enough in October, then, yeah, there's a good chance we'll get development in the Caribbean anyway. And, yes, that's true, because climatologically, we will be shifting our focus in here. However, I think that the idea that this pattern would bring cold air over the United States after a cold, after a hot summer, the cool air coming in changes the pattern so that it's even more likely than normal that we get something in here within the next couple of weeks. And I think we're going to have to watch that closely. Eventually, this trough will get far enough east that the high pressure will come in here and help incubate things down here. But as of this week, probably not going to see that if this trough really is over here over the east. The the conditions just aren't quite there, but you can see that pressures are overall low in here because the MJO is going to be trying to come back, and we can see that Sorry, within the next couple of weeks, we have the MJO coming back into octants 7 and 8, and these are octants that favor upward motion in the Caribbean, and that could allow low pressure to develop. And the GFS ensembles, the mean sea level pressure days 12 through 15, still show this low pressure broad showing up in the northwest Caribbean, and these blue blotches of color here indicate ensemble variance due to some of the members indicating storms developing of tropical nature in this area of the world. And the Caribbean is shown to be very wet in the 10 to 15 day period in here. So there's still general support for mischief and lowering of pressures in here as long as we get this high pressure to the north. See, we have 1,016 to 1,020 millibar pressures up over the east and over North Carolina near Asheville. We need that there. And the low pressure in Cuba, this is about 1,010 at Guantanamo, about 1,018 at Asheville. That's a difference of eight. That's what we need here so that we can have this pressure gradient that forces air down to converge in the Caribbean and make those thunderstorms develop so that we can get a tropical cyclone. So I think we'll still have to watch this area. Of course, it's great news that there's no significant model support for it anytime soon, and the Caribbean is generally quiet right now. We will have to watch 98L. This will probably be affecting the Lesser Antilles here, perhaps the Puerto Rico and even Hispaniola area down the road with at least some more rainfall. And just the rainfall alone is not going to be great news, especially for Puerto Rico, who has had a lot of flooding and rainfall from this hurricane season so far. So that's not great news. The good news, though, is that the wind with this may not be too much of an issue as wind shear will probably keep it down at a low roar as it comes towards the islands and here in other words may not become a hurricane similar to Maria but of course that is a several days out and we will have to keep a close eye on this in case it tries to wind up faster than promised. Alright that's it for today. Thanks for watching.